I was popping. Good afternoon. Bon pomeriggio. You know what I'm talking about? But before we even get started, some afternoon mob stories. We're coming through with some gangster spotlights. We just dropped the independent, uh, you know what I'm saying, hip hop spotlight last night. You know what I'm saying? So business as usual. I came home this afternoon because I got the whole night shift tonight. So you know what I'm saying? I say, let me, let me, let me put up some stories. But before we start, before we even begin... You know what I'm saying? I got real life problems. Who don't? And what do we do? We light up the spliff. So take a joint, take a joint, you know, take a pull of your joint, a blunt, or whatever your your your, your blunt, your bong. I don't know what it is. And throw some smoke in the fucking atmosphere, you cheap fuck. Hold on. Oh my god, I don't even know what weed this is. I don't even know. I just, I just, you know, I just, I don't even know. I swear to God, the kid gave me a bag of buds and he was like, he's like, I don't even know what to call it. It's just proper bud. So we're going to call it, I'm smoking proper haze. We'll call it proper haze. And uh, let me see what I got here really quick, really quick, really quick. And I'm getting those pictures for the 420 uh, uh, report. So I got them. I got them. Right. I got the pictures. I, I appreciate the emails. Right. But, uh, what kind of live resin is this? Strawberry shortcake. Delicious. Delicious. Let's get down to business. It's a mob story. Just one of millions. It's a mob story. How Roy DeMeo perfected the art of making people disappear. Roy DeMeo was born in Brooklyn in 1942 into a family of working class immigrants. It didn't take long for the Mio to enter a life of organized crime. He started out small and worked his way up joining the Gambino family before forming his own crew and developing a signature method of execution. It was named the Gemini method, which dismembered victims in such a way that no trace could be found. By the time Roy was 17, he was running a small-scale loan shark operation full-time. This caught the attention of, of Anthony Gaggi, an associate of the Gambino family. Gaggi approached the mayor and told him he'd make even more money with the loan shark in business if he worked for the Gambinos directly. So that's what the mayor did. While he and Gaggi were building up the loan shark operation in the late 1960s, the mayor was putting together his very own gang on the side. The, the mayor crew as it would come to be known, started primarily with car theft and drug trafficking. The mayor and his crew found lucrative ways to loan the money and stole from credit unions so that they could build up their businesses. You know what I say about business, right? Business before pleasure. In the 1970s, one of the mayor's partners in a stolen car ring Andre Katz went to the Brooklyn District Attorney's Office to provide them with information on the mayor and his crew. Disgracia. This led to Katz's abduction in 1975. It was the first known murder committed by the DeMeo crew. Between then and 1983, the gang was suspected of murdering at least 100 people. Roy DeMeo himself was thought to have killed around 70 personally. In order to kill often and not get caught, Roy DeMeo devised a specific method when it came to handling murders. The process was called the Gemini Method, named after the crew's popular hangout spot, the Gemini Lounge, where most of the murders happen. To execute the Gemini Method, a member of the crew lured whoever the, the day's murder victim was into the club through a side door. The victim would then be taken to a back room of the club. At that point, a second crew member would appear with a silenced pistol and a towel. He would then shoot the victim in the head and wrap the towel around it to keep the blood from splattering. Next, another member would stab the victim in the heart to stop the blood flow from the gunshot wound. Pay attention. The DeMeo crew members would then drag the victim's corpse to a bathtub where the rest of the blood would be drained out. Once bled dry, the victims was chopped into pieces, which were then wrapped into bags, placed into boxes, and dropped off at the dump. Now, interesting, you know, I was listening to a podcast with the Iceman Killer. And in the podcast, right, we talked about this, even though Shatter said, uh-uh-uh, fucking the Iceman's a liar. 
there was a part in the podcast where the Iceman said he was sitting with the Mayo and he watched his crew do exactly what the fuck I just read. And he was fucking like amazed from one killer to another. He was just amazed. He sat there and said, holy shit, that's beautiful. The DeMeo crew, crew members became experts in this brutally efficient method of murdering and dismembering where victims disappeared without a trace. During his reign as leader of the DeMeo crew, Roy DeMeo made a case for Gaji for them to partner with an Irish-American gang called the Westies. The Mayo was right, and the partnership between the Westies and the Gambinos provided to be very lucrative. This gave DeMeo a stamp of approval by the Gambino family. But as the 1980s rolled around, investigations into the Gambino family by the FBI had grown as a number of missing people and murders were linked to the Gambinos in the Gemini Club. Police were being fed tips by numerous informants. Disclassia! And the FBI was holding routine stakeouts by the Gemini Club. It's been speculated that while this was happening, Paulie Castellano, the head of the Gambino family, put out a hit on Roy DeMeo to take the heat off. However, he had trouble finding someone to do the job. I would believe so. Minga, this guy will come after the whole family tree. A conversation about this was allegedly recorded by a bug that had been placed in the Gambino home. Mm-mm, fucking dirty feds. At the same time, Roy DeMeo became increasingly paranoid. He had already been arrested twice and managed to be acquitted. He believed there had been a hit placed on him and reports indicated he contemplated faking his own death. It turned out his paranoia was on the money. Paul Castellano had put a hit out on the mail, but was but was having difficulty finding someone willing to do the job. According to mob turncoat Sammy Gravano, disgracia. Eventually, the contract was given to Frank DeChico. But the Chico allegedly handed the job to the Mayo's own men. The Mayo's son, Albert, wrote that in his final days, the Mayo was paranoid and knew that he would be killed soon. The Mayo considered faking his own death and leaving the country. However, instead, he left the house one day and never returned. Albert the Mayo later found Roy's personal belongings, such as his watch, wallet, and ring in his study room and a Catholic pamphlet. According to the book Murder Machine, in his final days, the male was seen wearing a leather jacket with a shotgun concealed underneath. On January 10, 1983, the male went to a crew member, Patty Testa's house, for a meeting with his men. A few days later, on January 20th, he was found murdered in his abandoned car trunk. He had been shot multiple times in the head and had a bullet wound in his hand, assumed by law enforcement as being being from throwing his hands up to his face in a self-defense reflex when the shots were fired at him. Anthony Gaggi was suspected by law enforcement officials of being the one who personally killed the male. According to Philip Carlos' 2008 biography of Anthony Gaspipe Casso, the male was killed at at Patrick Testa's East Flatbush home by Joseph Testa and Anthony Center following an agreement with Caso, who was given the contract by Gotti and the Chico after they were unable to kill the Mayo during the fall of 1982. The Caso biography notes that the Mayo was seated about to receive coffee when Testa and Center opened fire. Anthony Gaggi was not present. In April of 1984, Colombo crime family soldier Ralph Scopo was overheard explaining to an associate that the Mayo had been killed by his own family because they merely suspected that he would not be able to stand up to legal charges that result from a stolen car wreck. The motive, as suggested by Scopo, is widely accepted by law enforcement and other sources. Another reason was that the Mayo was attracting too much attention from the FBI. Now, I can understand this man's a killer, and I can understand that this man gets arrested, but you think he's going to flip for being arrested about a stolen car ring? That does not make sense to me. The Mayo's crew was soon rounded up, and the core members, Henry Borelli, Joseph Testa, and Anthony Senta, were imprisoned for life after two trials that saw them convicted of a collective total of 25 murders, in addition to extortion, car theft, and drug trafficking. The convictions, the convictions were secured in a large part by testimony of former members 
Frederick Denome and Dominic Montiglio. Paul Castellano was indicted for ordering the murder of the mayo, as well as a host of other crimes, but of course was killed in December 1985 while out on bail in the middle of the first trial. The murder was allegedly ordered by John Gotti, who thus became the new boss of the Gambino family. And there it is. Mob stories. How Roy DeMeo made bodies disappear. Now that's fucking crazy. You know? Great story. Great story. Who, who do we got to throw uh, the respect on? We got to throw somebody's uh, uh, respect on somebody's name right here. Oh, a female. By Kara Goldfarb. Eh? Nice. That's what I'm talking about. Mob stories. Like the video. You see our numbers going up? Like the video. Like the video. You know why? Because we start popping everywhere. Whole ruckus crew going to start running this. Understand what I'm saying? All right? 